For the past decade, the US women's national team has been a powerhouse that has dominated women's international soccer, a team to be feared on the biggest stage. The best thing I have ever been a part of. From here on out, we'll just be known as America's team. After winning the last two World Cups, the US has an opportunity to make it an unprecedented three in a row. But, yes, there's a but. This summer will mark the biggest challenge yet. The formation is presented by Synchrony Bank Savings. A new and real threat to the women's international soccer throne is looming, with the emergence of a number of the European teams, and in cases like Germany, the re-emergence. Then there's a changing of the guard for the Americans. Some key players will miss the tournament due to injury, and in all, 60% of the defending champion roster will not return. It all means the prevailing theme for the US women's national team in the build-up to 2023 has been uncertainty. Meanwhile, a new generation of standout talent is on the rise. Coach Vlatko Andonovsky will be relying on his entire roster from one generation to the next to write their own history. With the roster set, here's a look at some of the difference makers this summer that I think you should be keeping an eye on, starting at the back. There's been a lot of discussion in the goalkeeping department where Andonovsky has rotated between longtime US starting keeper and World Cup winner Alyssa Nair and Casey Murphy. Nair has typically been number one, but there are questions about her confidence entering this summer. On the domestic scene, it's not been a great year for her Chicago Red Stars with some wild variants in their results. Will it have any bearing on the World Cup? Well, that remains to be seen. But when it does come to the big stage, Nair is the more experienced and consistent performer. She was the mainstay goalkeeper en route to glory in France 2019 and has shown throughout her career that she can make huge saves under pressure. But it's hard to overlook Casey Murphy. Yes, she's only been a senior international for less than two years, but she has had a standout season on the domestic front. Murphy's international star is rising. This year, she became the fastest goalkeeper in US women's national team history to reach 10 shutouts. She is a brilliant backup. And if she's called upon to be more than that, then she's ready. In front of the goalkeeper would have been the backbone to this team, Becky Sauerbrunn. But less than a week before the roster was announced came the devastating news that the injured captain would not make it back in time. Absolutely gut-wrenching news. She described it by saying, heartbreak isn't even the half of it. Sauerbrunn's leadership and experience on the pitch and in the locker room have been an invaluable asset to the national team. So it's really hard to overstate just how big a void her absence leaves. But her impact on this side is so ingrained that her presence will still be felt, even if she's not making the trip down under. And so let's focus on the centre-backs who will need to step up in her absence. Beginning with a player you would imagine is at the start of her own very long career on the US women's national team. Naomi Germa is the only player ever to win both Rookie and Defender of the Year in the NWSL, and she did that in 2022, which was the same year in which she was also the number one draft pick. Talk about a seamless transition. When the World Cup kicks off, it will be only 15 months since she made her first appearance for the senior national team. But what an impression she's made in that time. She looks like she's been there for years, and she's still only 23. In 2019, the same year the US Women's National Team last won the World Cup, Naomi won the national championship in what was her sophomore year at Stanford. Now four years on, this is her chance to prove herself on the biggest stage of all. Even before the Sauber news, when asked whether Germa should start, Megan Rapino called it a no-brainer. With a typical Rapino flourish, she said Germa, quote, can play any kind of ball, she's a great leader, she's just f***ing good. Germa is quick, she can cover ground, she's good one-on-one, -on -one. she's super smart, calm, composed, and has all the attributes to be a world-class defender. And she'll patrol that back line alongside Alana Cook, well, Cook has started the majority of games for the women's national team in 22 and 23 under Andonovsky. It's pretty clear that the coach's faith in Cook is solid. So if the cook Germa pairing is responsible for guarding their side's goal this summer, what might we expect? Well, actually, last year Andonovsky explained what he likes about the two centre-backs. He said they're very brave, not just off the ball, but on the ball too, taking just the right amount of risk. 
More recently, I spoke with two-time World Cup winner Ali Krieger about the defensive duo who have just a fifth of Sauerbrunn's caps between them. And I asked whether this lack of experience was a concern on the world stage. There's definitely our center back pairing who have yet to appear in a, in a big tournament, but that doesn't mean they're not fully capable. I have full trust that they're gonna get the job done. They've had really good seasons so far. Uh, they deserve to be there and, and they deserve their position. And I'd be remiss if I didn't mention Crystal Dunn here too, especially given the transitional period that the US is going through. Dunn's role, or should I say roles, are crucial to this team. She has the experience, the leadership skills, and yes, her versatility knows no end in that she plays different positions for club and country. Sauerbrunn's talked about how Dunn is a world-class left back that can also be a world-class eight, 10, whatever you want to throw at her. She's not out of position anywhere. Crystal is one, one of the best players overall uh, in the world and the fact that she can play uh, midfielder on, uh, on Sunday and then play left back on Wednesday, that, uh, that just uh, speaks about her as a, and then the quality of the player that she's, uh, she is. Dunn really does offer so much on both sides of the ball and she gives everything for the team, even when it's difficult to do so. She recently admitted that her adaptability does come with some pain, speaking candidly about how difficult the switch is from her natural position of midfield to that of a defender for the national team. It does not come easy. Um, I think it's something that I had to work through. I struggled with um, identity. I struggled with, you know, people seeing me as this attacking player and then now you almost have to like rebrand yourself as, a, as an outside back. It is something that I battled with the idea of like, okay, is this a compliment? Is this a backhanded compliment? Is this a blessing? Is this a curse? But as time has gone on, she's also learned to accept it as her superpower. She is one of the US women's national team's superpowers. And with the injuries and uncertainty around this roster, well, she might just be needed in the midfield anyway, but that's for the next edition. This episode of The Formation is presented by Synchrony Bank Savings. Play to win.